In this video, we're going to be teaching our very own AI to play Mario Kart Wii. But to really give our AI a challenge, it's not just going to be racing alone, but instead we're going to be putting it up against the game's very own CPUs for a true showdown of AI power. Today's arena for this battle is going to be the track Ghost Valley 2, which I definitely chose at random and not just because it happens to be one of my favourite tracks. This AI is going to be completely self-taught. That means that it's going to start off knowing absolutely nothing about Mario Kart, the track, or even the concept of driving. We're just going to let the AI play thousands and thousands of games, and we're going to hope that eventually it's going to learn how to drive. To give the AI some guidance during this learning, however, we're going to give our AI some rewards as it plays the game. So every time it does something good, we can give it a reward to encourage that behaviour. On screen now, you can see me playing Mario Kart and on the right you can see the rewards I get for driving around. The rewards are calculated with a mixture of how fast I'm going and how through the track I am, encouraging me to finish the race as fast as possible. So that's how rewards are given, but how does an AI actually use these rewards to guide its behaviour? Well what the AI is really trying to learn is that from any different position in the game, how much reward can it receive by taking different actions from that position? For example, in this position, Turning left or going straight are likely to give us very little reward because we would likely crash meaning we wouldn't be going very quickly and we wouldn't make it very far around the track. On the other hand, if we turned right, we're likely to keep our speed higher and we're likely to get further so we'd get a lot more reward. When our AI is playing thousands of games, all it's really trying to do is get better and better at predicting how much reward it's going to get by using the different actions in different positions so it can choose the action that will give it the most reward. While our AI is training, you'll be able to see this little bar chart. This shows that for each of the actions the AI can take, what its current reward prediction is for the action. In this case, I gave the AI just 5 different actions, including hard left, soft left, wheelie and going straight forward, soft right and hard right. You'll probably notice that the action predictions move around a lot while the AI is playing. This is because every different position that the AI is in, it's going to have a different action prediction for, and it's going to think it can get different amounts of rewards for each of the different actions. But also, as the AI is constantly learning, it's constantly updating what rewards it thinks it's going to get, so it's going to make them move around even more. So now that we've got that out the way, let's let our AI do some training, and we'll check in every now and then to see how it's getting on, and how much reward it thinks it's going to be getting. So after 30 minutes of training, the AI hasn't learned a whole lot yet, but is occasionally able to make it around the first corner. From the reward predictions, we can see that the AI has begun to learn when it's about to die, as you see the predictions drastically drop, but although it's figured this out, it hasn't really figured out how to avoid the dying part yet. Skipping forward a while, by 4 hours of training, the AI is beginning to show glimmers of hope, but it's still frequently just dying right at the start. Although it has figured out that it needs to turn right, it still seems to have trouble timing its drift and also seems to get bashed around by the CPUs quite a bit, so our AI isn't quite proving its superiority just yet. After 8 hours, the AI is getting more confident and is starting to get around halfway around the map pretty consistently. At this point, using the ramp to do the shortcut is pretty challenging, with the AI messing it up about every which way you can imagine. But since the shortcut saves so much time on this track, the AI keeps trying it since it gives a very large bonus to its reward if it's successful. At 12 hours, the AI is looking much more confident, with its reward predictions at the beginning of the track being easily twice what they were when it first started training. The AI is now rarely dying at the beginning, and is usually just struggling with the second half. For a while, this AI also went through a short period of actually not taking the shortcut. Because it was so much more confident with the second half of the track, even though it was still struggling a little bit, it just valued the security of staying alive since it knew it could get a lot of reward just by attempting the second half. With all of this put together, the AI was eventually finally able to beat its first lap.
After 16 hours, the AI starts finishing laps pretty consistently, and the only thing preventing it from finishing an entire race is just becoming more consistent and patching up some rarer gaps in its knowledge. Now that the AI completes laps though, we can really see it starting to actually optimize its driving, not just caring about staying alive, but trying to go faster, such as taking corners tighter and getting mini turbos for that extra reward. After a full day of training, it's really easy to see how much better the AI has gotten and is even able to complete its first race, taking home the first place position by an absolute landslide. Aside from finishing the race though, I was particularly happy to see that the AI actually started wheeling. Before this point, on the straight sections of the map, the AI just kind of jumped around instead of wheeling, which loses a lot of speed and time, but it appears that after about a day of training, it seems to have fixed that problem and is really able to get some extra speed. So here we are at 48 hours of training. Now I don't usually leave the AIs running for quite this long, but I had a particularly busy week and I kind of just forgot to turn it off. So here we are. In fact, I actually left it running for a total of 80 hours, which is really overkill to say the least. But by 48 hours, the AI was pretty damn good though, and it was definitely proving its superiority over the Mario Kart Wii CPUs. On screen now, you can see the average reward the AI received throughout the 80 hours of training. Things started off with pretty rapid improvement, but towards the end of training, things did begin to plateau off a little bit. Anyway, from here on out, I'm gonna show some of the best clips as the AI headed towards the full 80 hours of training. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video made your day just a little bit better and be sure to check out some of my other videos if you like this one. I've done lots of other stuff like teaching an AI to play laser hockey and Super Mario Bros, so be sure to check those out. But anyway, I hope to see you in the next one.